This week on Quick Bits for July 24th through the 28th, we are covering the Cobra alibi filing, Idaho defamation updates, that Carly Russell hoax, and lots of shit business. Let's get into it. I'm legal analyst Emily D. Baker. This is the Quick Bits, where I break down just the main points of the pop culture and entertainment cases I'm currently covering on YouTube and the Emily Show podcast. Let's get into it. The Brian Koberger alibi for the Idaho University murders was due on July 24th. And that alibi notice is to let the prosecution know who the alibi witnesses were there. What proves that Brian Koberger was somewhere else at the time of the murders? And the notice they gave was, we're going to use cross-examination and maybe an expert will keep you posted. So the alibi filing was not very flushed out. Of course, right at the end of the week, there was a big document dump, and I will be talking about that next week with motions to dismiss and the rest of it. Then there were lots of updates in the Idaho defamation case, and I went through the court hearing that I had sat in on for the motion to quash and the motion to dismiss. I think the court is going to be inclined to grant those, but when it comes to a motion to dismiss, there can be room to amend it after the fact unless the court grants it with prejudice. We'll see what happens here, but there has also been some filings seeking a broad amount of discovery from the professor, and so new motion work is happening trying to quash those subpoenas. Lots going on in Idaho, but the big thing we are waiting for in that defamation case is the court's ruling on the motion to quash and the motion to dismiss. I was not surprised, though, that even at the oral argument for those motion hearings, the TikToker doubled down on the allegations and what they said. Then I covered the press conference from law enforcement in Hoover, Alabama, with regard to Carly Russell's abduction hoax, with a statement read from her criminal defense attorney saying that she made it up at that time on Tuesday, I talked about whether or not there would be charges filed, if there could be charges filed, what that would look like, and the fact that they would probably be misdemeanor charges with substantial restitution, and whether or not this is a case that could be settled almost as quickly as it's filed. And it seems like the defense and law enforcement are working together because charges were brought on Friday, and very quickly Carly Russell was um, turned into custody, booked in, released on bail, and back out of custody pending two misdemeanor charges. It's likely that the defense is already working with prosecution on what um, a plea deal would look like for these misdemeanors, which means there's a possibility there for community service and for restitution for the amount of money spent by law enforcement in the search over those two days. But there aren't other charges that are really appropriate here, even though people want jail time in this case. I don't know if that's going to be what happens or if that's even appropriate because then more resources are being spent. Or is this better the case where community service and repayment of substantial restitution is the more appropriate thing? We will see in the weeks to come what is worked out between her defense attorney and the prosecution. I saw a lot of questions on the internet about the things she was alleged to have taken from work and whether or not there was any theft of money from her workplace due to her internet searches of how to take cash from a cash register without getting caught or something of that nature. That is a different jurisdiction from Hoover, Alabama. So if there are additional charges, they would be with a different prosecutorial agency and a different law enforcement agency. We will see what happens there. For the podcast this week and then on Wednesday and Thursday, I covered the Taylor Shabizness Business case in Wisconsin. Taylor Shabizness Business was charged with three crimes, first degree intentional homicide, mutilating a corpse, and third degree sexual assault. She went to trial on Monday, started with opening statements. I summarized those in the podcast this week and talked about the fact that this will be a two-phase trial in Wisconsin, that there will be a guilt phase determining essentially if she did what she's accused of doing, which is pretty hard since she admits basically all of it on video, and then there will be a responsibility or punishment phase because she had pled not guilty and NGI, not guilty by reason of mental disease or defect. So there would be a second phase of the trial to determine even if she is found guilty on the first part, 
What is the appropriate punishment? Is she culpable? Is she criminally responsible for her actions? Will she serve time in a mental health facility? Will the courts place her somewhere where she has the possibility to get out? Or will she be facing the statutory sentence in Wisconsin, life without the possibility of parole? And seeing that she is 25 years old and does have a history of mental health uh, concerns, it's not surprising to me that the defense raised the NGI because it's the only thing that gives her the possibility of ever being out of a custodial environment again. That trial started, as I said, Monday. The closing arguments and verdict came down on Wednesday on the first part of the trial, finding her guilty of all counts in just about 40 minutes. And then on Thursday, the entire second trial happened from opening arguments to verdict in the NGI phase. And we saw two witnesses for the defense, two witnesses for the prosecution. The jury came back in just under an hour with a finding that she was not NGI, meaning she is responsible, criminally responsible and culpable for her crimes. What the jury had to decide on that second part is did Taylor Shabiznes have a mental disease or defect and did that mental disease or defect cause her to not appreciate the wrongfulness of her actions or not be able to comport her actions to law-abiding society? And they found on the first question, no, she does not have a mental disease or defect. It indicates to me that this jury believed that her admitted methamphetamine use was a much larger issue in this trial than any underlying mental health condition because voluntary intoxication, even if that voluntary intoxication causes um, psychotic behavior, causes a, a particular type of behavior, because you are under the influence and you wouldn't do those things if you weren't under the influence, that is still voluntary intoxication. It does not mean you're not criminally responsible for what you do just because you are under the influence. And it seemed that the use of methamphetamine played a really big role in this trial. Taylor Shabiznes's father testified for the defense and had very strong feelings about Taylor Shabiznes's husband, who is in custody for dealing narcotics, but also um, the father said that he is the quote unquote fucking loser that got her in to all of this shit. It is a sad case, but I don't think there was any option for the jury here with all of the admissions that Taylor Shabiznes made after the arrest with the horrific nature of this crime. Sentencing will be in September. The court has set it aside for an entire day. I believe the court anticipates a substantial amount of victim impact statements because this crime has impacted not just the victim's family, but also their community. And we will see that in September. I will cover the sentencing. It should be an interesting sentencing. It might be the only time we see Taylor Shabiznes speak on her own behalf since the night of the crime when she was interviewed by law enforcement. And with all of that, that's what happened this past week. This has been the Quick Bits. If you want to see live trial coverage and see what I thought of the witnesses and their testimony, that is all over on my long form channel. And with that, thank you for being here. Thank you for being a honored. I'll see you in the next one. For deep dives into the stories that I covered here, you can find them on my YouTube channel at The Emily D. Baker and The Emily Show Podcast. I stream every Tuesday and Thursday. The podcast goes live on Wednesdays. And if you want more Law Nerd community, come join us at lawnerdsunite.com.